Project Cars 2 was launched two years ago on the 21st of September amidst some fanfare. This was much on the back of the problems of the first Project Cars and the bucket list of improvements promised for the second release. Two years later, I am asking the question, is Project Cars 2 still worth it? During these two years, Project Cars 2 has been updated with many bug fixes, physics tweaks and improvements. Also, it received a good portion of DLCs to complement the already complete base game, because a new Project Cars is somewhere in the horizon and in full development, according to some news. It will be an interesting exercise to check out where Project Cars 2 is at the moment, or if it still deserves or it has ever deserved the polarization it gets. Since its launch, it has received 5 DLCs, including 3 really good themed ones, the Ferrari Essentials, the Porsche Legends, but for me the most worthwhile, the Spirit of Le Mans, that boosts the already great car selection. Personally, Project Cars 2 was, and still is, a bit of a hit and miss depending on what is driven. It has cars not worth even spending a minute, then it has a few of the most addictive cars of all sim racing. The general response to Project Cars 2 has always been somewhere along those lines, not divided only in terms of content, but the worthiness of said content. In my case, it all depends, like stated, on what is driven. The car, class and racing discipline selection is as wide as it is deep. Plenty of classes to choose from in either formulas, GT, touring cars or even dirt racing. In theory, it seems to have something for everyone. In practice, it seems to work, but your mileage may vary, as it is with all things. The quality of driving will depend on the development invested in each car or class. Development-wise, though now slightly improved with the updates, the car seem to be on different tiers of attention received, or if you will, simulation. This means that even after two years you're gonna get a tier of cars that are strange to drive and are not really relatable to the real thing. Others that are extremely fun but the simulation value doesn't seem to be there. And finally cars that are believable in how they drive or act with a tire model worth of mentioning doing almost everything well. In the first tier cars like the road cars or Rocket Bunny MX-5s might be there. On the second tier, cars like the 787B or mainly old high aero cars and on the last group, the GT3, GT4 and GT5 classes as well as Clio Cups and so on. Ignoring the lower developed cars, the physics are compelling. They handle generally as they should and I tend to like the tires with their bite, heating and cooling cycles, how the brakes perform. On these cars, Project Cars 2 does a good job. My favorite classes tend to be the lower aero, lower powered race cars in classes like the GT5, GT4s, TCRs or my all time favorites, the Clio Cup, which are such a blast to drive on old English circuits. Speaking of circuits, while I'm not totally sure if they are laser scanned, side by side with laser scan tracks they seem to be okay. Side by side with non-laser scan tracks like the ones available in Formula 1 2019, for example, like Spa-Francorchamps, it's far and above in terms of quality. The selection is once again far and wide and picks everything and anything from Formula 1 tracks to Rallycross. Besides all of this choice of cars and tracks, that selection doesn't transpire particularly well to the multiplayer. While it's populated and the game does have a healthy constant population, hovering around between 1400 and 1800 peak daily players, the ones that drive online seem to be centering themselves around the GT3 class, as pretty much all matches are with that class. However, multiplayer is flexible enough to allow private and public lobbies without needing to rent a server. Though, the populations of course will depend once again on what is selection, which means a combination that is deemed too exotic might not have enough people joining in. Two years later the netcode seems to be in the same region of what it was when it was released and one thing that is worthwhile mentioning is the off-track stats, even though they received an overhaul, they are extremely annoying or overbearing to this day. The multiplayer itself works okay for what it is, 
It has a safety rating system, which is explained in a video presence in the card above, allowing for filtering drivers that are more risk prone, if you want to say it like that. Generally speaking, the multiplayer, while not groundbreaking, it's the best one around that works with the browser, as the safety rating system integrates rather well. Besides content, Project Cars 2 has quite an interesting feature set. First and foremost, a rather deep career mode with different career paths following different classes. In the career there are goals and even special events to complete. It is somewhat reminiscent of the Formula 1 series, but in my opinion with a longer term appeal. For those who like hot lapping, uh, Project Cars 2 has you covered since it has a leaderboard you can try to get your name on by choosing a car and track combination and then try to beat the best times. A great feature Project Cars 2 has is the weather system. There are many types of weather which will impact the driving differently. The track responds dynamically to water buildup. It will be soaked, then it will dry up as the rain stops and the sun comes in and vice versa, it will start to soak up if the rain comes in. The puddles will build up in places that are expected, such as in asphalt depressions or in corner sides. These puddles work rather well, making the driving challenging as they will impact braking or even will make the car swerve if a car hits them. Of all sims with dynamic weather or rain, Project Cars 2 still does the nicest looking, most compelling weather, not only to look at, but also to drive in. As the game was improved during these last two years, not only on physics or handling, but also on graphical performance, while Project Cars 2 is not exactly easy on any system, it used to run rather well in my old i5-3570K with the GTX 1060, both on VR or in screen. And still to today's standard, Project Cars 2 is a game that looks really, really nice. Having said all of this and summing up, two years later Project Cars 2 is still a game that holds up and a game that I like to drive in. However, it won't be everyone's cup of coffee. It's an extremely competent driving sim that drives nicely in many cases. It has good or competent force feedback when set up right, at least in my opinion, I know not everyone agrees, and the feature pack is rather compelling. At the moment it has an active, steady player base plenty of content to drive and should keep anyone busy if you are deep into career modes or any of the game's features. But having said all of that, the game is 2 years old, but the price isn't. At £70 for the deluxe version or £50 for the standard right now, it's way too much of a stretch to recommend it at that price, but of course if you find any deal that drops it over 50% and I think the the price for Deluxe should be around 25 at most. If you get them at that price, buy it. I don't think you're going to regret it. But anyways, guys, I am going to leave you here. Leave me in the comments your thoughts about Project Cars 2 over these last two years, your experiences with it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press like, consider subscribing and also hitting the notification bell so you'll see more videos and streams when they come out. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.